Welcome back to the ROM Hack Reviews. Welcome to Twiggy Saves the World. Twiggy Saves the World, my most favorite Nintendo game of all time. So a 60s British supermodel is going to save the world. Uh, sort of, sort of, sort of. It's actually uh, Twiggy Ramirez, the bassist of Marilyn Manson. Really? Yes, yes, because uh, as, as some of you may have judged by this title screen, this might not be a legit game. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, this is one of my early ROM hacks, folks. Yep. Uh, very early on. This is like the second one I ever uh, worked on. Oh. This is back when I was calling myself Tom Foolery online. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, made in 2003 in Nowhere, Michigan. So, Twiggy saves the world. Let's just jump right in. He's a real nowhere man. <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, we have Andre, I'm assuming Andre the Giant. Yeah. We have Santa, I'm assuming Santa Claus. Yeah. Uh, Mr. T, that's pretty obvious. Yep. <laughs> uh, Mikhail, I'm assuming... With a little sickle and hammer over his head. <laughs> yeah, uh, Mikhail Gorbachev. Yeah. Uh, Raiden, the god of useless. And... Davis. Davis. Which is Jim Davis, the creator of Garfield. Really? No, no, okay. no, not even close. Not no. Miles Davis? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, what I did here is this is mostly pop culture uh, figures. Right. Except for uh, this uh, cut man here, I had to change into Jonathan Davis of Corn. Oh. And that's why he's a little obscure. Mm, okay. But let's start with Andre the Giant, because that's where I always start. Oh, man, look oh, at yes. the... What you are going to do, brother? Wrong wrestler. <laughs> Uh, but as you can see, I, I changed the color scheme a bit. We got Twiggy looking fantastic in his dress. Yep. And then uh, the Hard Hat Max, are, they have joined uh, the Susan Squad, apparently. Ooh, and the health is little plus signs. Health is little plus signs. Surprised I didn't get sued by the Red Cross. <laughs> All right, let's see if I can pull this off, because this is one of the trickiest bits in the game. In fact, that's kind of why I wanted to start here. Oh, Ooh, right. not bad for a very cheap USB Nintendo controller, folks. Yes. So yeah, this was uh, this was like my first attempt at fully fleshing out a um, a ROM hack, huh. and again it was just like, well, go wild. Um, and hey, you know, I was a college kid at the time. Uh, me and my buddies were really into music. Uh, I was really digging Twiggy Ramirez's style, and I thought, like, wouldn't that be funny? <laughs> So, yeah, now we have a game where Tugi Ramirez is shooting fireballs out of his hands and, uh... Those are fireballs? Fighting Santa Claus. Oh, yeah, little fireballs. Okay, I see them now. I thought they were cinnamon candies. <laughs> <laughs> He's saving the world by throwing candy at people. Uh, believe it or not, actually, um, back when I made this, I created, like... Oh, 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 wow, stupid, stupid rookie mistake. <laughs> Whoopsie. At least we're back here. And not... Oh yeah, and this is uh, this is something that I could never fix. For some reason when you die, he defaults back to uh, blue and cyan. Mm. But if you just go into the start menu and undo it, it completely fixes it. Yeah, he was swimming in the uh, that berry vodka from uh, uh, Trailer Park Boys. Alright, you gotta go in the middle. Uh-huh. Oh, Aww, robbed! Ah, uh, I see uh, Big Eye has come back from the I was going to say, I, I changed some of the enemies just slightly, but the Big Eye I, I just didn't fuck with. Because I didn't really know what to do. Also, uh, if you're wondering why the points are ends, I have no fucking clue. 
I assumed it was N for Nintendo. I, I, I made this nearly 20 years ago, so... Maybe they're Nega coins, like Nega God, Duck. It's hard to imagine I made this 20 years ago. Ah, <laughs> uh, I know. But I do kind of like the color scheme that I messed with is in uh, the level. Good old Andre the Giant. Yeah. I forgot <laughs> he's got little blood squirts whenever you shoot them. The only doggy paddles. Yeah, what's his main attack? Farting on people? I forgot what Andre the Giant's, uh, I think it was just a gorilla press slam. That sounds about right. Then he would enter the ring by, uh, walking, uh... Over the rope. Over the rope, yeah. Oh man, we beat him. Ooh, we got a target. But yeah, this this was my first attempt at like, I, well, I wouldn't say my first attempt. My first thing I probably did was Friday Thirteenth One Point Three, mm. that Jason Returns one that I did. Ah. But uh, no, I I dusted this one off. I'm like, yeah, this might be fun to do. So I figured, eh, why not? All right, Jonathan Davies. I mean Davis. <laughs> oh, Jim Davis, the creator of Garfield. <laughs> No, it, so the reason why I went with Jonathan Davis for Cutman is, is just stupid. But, um, so fun fact, folks, on how uh, Mega Man's uh, graphics work. Uh, the sprites for Mega Man and Cutman are very similar. Ah. And thus, for some of his run animations... Cutman uses, uh, it actually shares some animation, leg animation with uh, Mega Man. Ah, good old recycling. So, in parts of the game, whenever uh, Cutman runs, um, he would suddenly be wearing a dress. Hmm. Because I put Twiggy in a dress. Right. So, I had to come up with someone that would also be wearing a dress. And I kind of went with Jonathan Davis because he was big into that whole, like, oh, uh, Scottish pride thing. Oh, uh, wearing the kilts, okay. Yeah, so I, I was like, well, he wears kilts. Uh, we'll put him in a kilt. By the way, everything is going to be horribly dated in this, folks. Because you got to remember, it was 2000, it was the early aughts. In 2003, yeah. I was an edgy teenager that uh, didn't know any better half the time. <laughs> That's why you see the Susan Squad symbols on the uh, on the hard hat Max. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, hey, don't give me shit about that. You know, I don't know if you noticed this, but they're the baddies. Yes. <laughs> Ooh, help. Personally, I kind of like what I did with some of the power-ups, too. I do like the power-ups are, you know, like spinning, uh, you know, crosses. Yeah, spinning plus signs. And, uh, the, um, uh, the gen the big health, rec or not health, uh, weapons energy recoveries, they're, uh, they're spinning atoms. Oh. But, yeah, I mean... I, again, why did I put Twiggy Ramirez in a video game? Because, well, it was it was the early 2000s. And, um, like I said, me and my friends were really into music at the time. Um, I, I was really fascinated by Twiggy Ramirez. <laughs> I, okay, I, I now uh, learned something. Well, we had this whole thing of, like, uh, I was trying to learn guitar at the time. Oh, and... Ah, oh, it's the hamburgers! Yep. Ah, oh, hamburgers. Ah, oh, hamburgers! Now, I was trying to learn guitar at the time, and my buddy's all like, Well, you suck at guitar. Maybe you could play the bass. Okay. Uh, because the bass has fewer strings. So, I was trying to get really into, like, the bass, you know, thing at the time, so... I was looking into bass musicians. I was a big fan of Primus because they actually had like a lead guitarist that like played bass. Ah. But um, 
No, I, I remember just like Twiggy Ramirez really stood out to me. I wasn't a big fan of Marilyn Manson, believe it or not. Oh, so this is not a fan game. No, it's not. It's, it's, I just, I just, I just dug his his look. You know, the whole shock glam rock thing with the dress. I thought it was kind of cool. Jonathan Davis in his fucking kilt, throwing scissors at me like an asshole. You're such a poser. Get your hair cut. BAM! Gotcha! What a pose. <laughs> but mostly this was just me playing around with things, seeing what I could get away with. Mm. Um, and yeah, it's, it's not very ambitious for its time, but... Yeah, it got the job done. Oh, Raiden, the god of useless. When, uh, when me and my friends were kids, we used to always talk about making Mega Man games. And when, uh, ROM hacking kind of became like a, oh shit, you can actually play with old Nintendo games. Um, yeah, naturally, like, one of the first things I wanted to do was mess with a Mega Man game. Ah, oh, god damn it. Boogie Ramirez has Crisco on his shoes. That's the thing about Mega Man 1. It's it's very slippery. Alright, I'm just gonna... I'm not above it. I'll use... The, I'll break out the scissors. That's actually one thing I like. It's little icons instead of the letters. Yeah, it's actually very helpful. Ah, cool electric bolts. Takes me back to my King of Mega Man days. <laughs> I remember, like, one of the deals was, like, you have one little fraction of life, and it's just like, get past this section, and it was literally just this section. Mm. And I was like, really? That's all? <laughs> Yay, memory blocks. So, as, uh, as some of you can tell, I, I may have played this game a time or two. A time or two? <laughs> Not just the Twiggy version, but, you know, it's the, the Mega Man one. Yeah, Mega one. Man 1. This is, uh, this is probably one of my favorite early Mega Mans. Actually, this is probably one of my favorite Mega Mans. Slippery controls and all. Yeah, I was gonna say, the, the controls are slippery, it's balls-ass hard at points. Very unforgivingly hard, might I add, especially oh, yes. once you get into the Wily levels. But, uh, I just like it. <laughs> we play what we like. Yeah, this was, uh, this was one of those games that I never got to play as a kid. Ah, yeah. I love, huh? I remember you saying something about that. Yeah, I, I love the Mega Man games, but it was funny because... I played Mega Man 2 at my cousin's house and fell in love with the game. And Mega Man 3 came out and it was awesome and I, at about that point I was like... Because when Mega Man 2 came out I, I didn't even realize that you can make sequels to video games. But um... And I was like, there must be a Mega Man 1. But you can never find it anywhere. So eventually... Um, you know, because I remember, like, tr always trying to find Mega Man 1, and I... Oh, wait, no, nah, that ain't the way I want to go. Oh, look, I can get... <laughs> I can get the magnet adapter again. No, I just only have one of them. The other one's spare parts, bud. Yep. Oh, whoa, uh... Whoa! Alright, game's getting a little freaky. I'm running this off an emulator, folks, so... And as far as emulators go, this is one of the oldest. Oh, shit! Yeah, because this is uh, Nestor, I believe. Yeah, this is Nestor. This was, um... Ooh. This is just straight up an executable file. Which, uh... Ooh, yeah, I mean, as far as old... Uh, I, I remember, like, I used to run an older one 
back in the day called Nesticle. Ooh. Which I, uh, I hated. It's, it really sucked. But, um... The one thing it could do is it would actually load in, um, palettes. Oh. For, like, whatever was on the screen at the time, it'd load in the color palettes. That's pretty neat. And that was unspeakably helpful when it came to hacking the, uh, the, the games. Because I could tell what color, um, oh, what the hex codes were for the colors on the screen at the time. Which, with the Nintendo, it was universal. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, the Scion color uh, for Mega Man is 2C. And any game that you play, uh, it'll always be 2C. That's just how the Nessus palette worked. Right. And now you know, annoying is half the battle. Alright, let's see if I can beat Raiden using the old trick. I doubt it, but we'll find out. Blood from the sea. Yeah. Oh, 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 he got me. I might be able to salvage. No. I did it. I cheated, but I did it. You get to freeze. <laughs> Normally, I like to go through the robot masters using just the regular weapons, folks. But ah. This is a hack I'm doing it on a very dodgy controller, on a very dodgy emulator. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to get through this thing at this point, folks. <laughs> All right. Santa! Santa! The night Santa went crazy? I am very proud of this level. Ooh, I am loving this color contrast. Yeah, I, I, I decided I was going to go with a sunset, you know, sort of thing. And... The contrast, I mean, I was really big into art at the time, too, so the contrast of orange and blue really worked. It really works here, too. Oh, look, a plane that loops the loop. Ow! Hey, on air disasters. <laughs> Yeah, I do like the, uh, the art. It's very uh, vapor wavy. Yeah. And that's actually where I think, like, I did a good job with this game, especially. I mean, some of the changing of the sprites are like, eh, they're not terrible, but it's, it's very amateurish. But when it comes to the color palettes and, like, the... I didn't change much with the levels, but I did change the colors, and I think that really matters. It's amazing how much you can make a, you can improve a level just by changing the color scheme. Oh yeah. It just looks so much better. I mean, I didn't touch any of the, of the uh, art for the uh, the art, uh, the um, sprites for the level, but just changing a few colors around it really makes it pop a little bit more. Got it. Okay. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. These fucking guys. These fucking guys. Alright, you know what? I'm not even playing around. Actually, alright, I'll play around and get that. Ah! No, yep, no, no. things are getting ugly now. Like her warning. Okay, we made it. Phew. Here's the tricky part. Ah! Here comes the jump kick. Yeah, I probably didn't need that. Force a habit, folks. I also like the fact that uh, when you do your uh, your power up, his dress changes. Color. Oh yeah, that's uh, yeah, it changes the color of his dress when he changes in between powers. Yeah, I think I think that's pretty neat. <laughs> well, that's why I kind of didn't mind the fact that like when he comes back, he's green and blue again, or uh, cyan and blue again, because mm -hmm. it kind of looks like he's a bit of a ghost. <laughs> like boo! <laughs> I'm Twiggy, not that Twiggy. The other Twiggy. 
Fun fact, Twiggy Ramirez's uh, name is based on the model Twiggy. That is true. Santa! You're bad Santa. Oh, he doesn't look like Billy Bob Thornton to me. Oh man, I'm not gonna beat him this way. All right, enough fucking around. Let's do this legit. Bastard Santa. Ooh, I Ooh. Ghost of Twiggy's pet. Ghost Twiggy comes on supernaturally. <laughs> All right, we'll go with Electric Twiggy. Electric Twiggy, in theaters May 5th. Yo -ho -ho! Almost too easy. It was actually really funny back in the day when I was really into Twiggy Ramirez. I had a, I had a t-shirt with him on it. Oh. And it just said Twiggy, you know. Mm -hmm. And I was renting videos one time from this guy. And uh I'd be on the, he was the owner of the shop. Ah. And he's all like, oh yeah, she's pretty attractive. <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of giggled and I was like, yeah, yeah, she's totally hot. <laughs> the joke for those of you who don't know, uh, folks, is uh, Twiggy was a bassist for Marilyn Manson that was a dude that wore uh, dresses. Bit of a bit of a cross dresser. That that that's the joke. <laughs> yeah. 2003, folks. Yeah, I was gonna say it's. You got to remember, it's the early 2000s. Uh, it was all about edgy stuff back then. Well, shouldn't have even bothered. I could have probably go. got that. I'm just being lazy at this point. Well, oh, right. Yeah, just refill that. So much fire. Good old fireman's level. Fill her up. Ooh. Hot toes, hot toes. Careful. I love how the fire boys are like, can't stay one place too long. Ow! It's been a while since I've played Mega Man 1. Oh, yes. <laughs> it really has, folks. I mean, I did a trial run just to make sure that the controller worked and all that stuff. Yeah, because configuring that controller was... A oh, it was such a nightmare. When you're dealing with a... Uh, when you're dealing with a fucking emulator that's this fucking old, it's just... Whew, good luck getting anything to fucking pair right with it. Oh, yes. I tried getting the Xbox One controller to work, it, it, that just wasn't happening. And then uh, Xbox 360, that wouldn't fucking work with it. It's just, it's too fucking complicated. The, the program has no idea what to do with that many fucking buttons available to it. Uh, fire up the butt! Fire the disco! I guess I know Danger High Voltage was 2004. What of it? Plus, on these older Nintendo games, I really... I play best when I'm actually playing with a Nintendo controller. Yeah, I, you get the feel for the buttons. Yeah, and honestly, if it doesn't have a D-pad, it just it, it feels weird to me. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can take them with the... I'm pretty certain I could take them with just the regular shot. I don't know, I'm a little bit down. I might not be able to pull this off. We'll see. Oh, Mikhail Gorbachev! 
Yeah, Perestroika and all that stuff. Or the Glasnost, I don't remember. The, uh... Oh! oh! Double kill! Oh, man. Ended in a draw? That ain't, That's lame. That's not the Russian way. Alright, this time we'll actually... Actually, you know what? Uh, this is all gonna get refilled anyway. Ah, we're blue now. Yep. Yeah. Old Frosty Twiggy. Uh, dos trecha. Das gedanje. That's goodbye. That's gonna be him in a minute. Uh, drinking the vatske. That's right, putting the Soviet Union on ice. <laughs> yep. Dos trecha. I don't know why, but uh, I remember when I was a teenager and in my 20s, I was just fascinated by everything Soviet. I wasn't like big old like, oh yeah, communism's the way or anything like that. No, I just, for some reason I was fascinated by the Soviet era. You mean, yeah, like, Soviet culture. Yeah. Well, not even just the culture, it's like, they always had like, I don't know why I always found the Soviets so funny, because like, they're like, we have all these nuclear submarines, and it's like, yeah, but they always fucking break down and fucking kill their crews. <laughs> I think it was just kind of like the joke of the, you know, like, the Soviets had this very brute force and safety be damned approach. Oh, yes. When it came to stuff, and <laughs> it was usually they had, like, the shoddiest equipment that would always kill, that always, like, break down and kill uh, whoever was using it. Right. I don't know why. I found that just hilarious uh, back then. Uh, it's it's not really that funny when you think about it, but. No, no. <laughs> The thing about Soviet culture for me is we didn't learn a lot about it because they were so secretive and you know, Russia's the enemy. Yeah, you know, actually... Russia's the, the enemy. That was, that was the one thing that really drove me nuts is... I remember being very young, you know, like when the Cold War was actually still going on, I, you know, I was, you know, very young. Mm -hmm. But I remember asking, like, my parents, you know, and all that, you know, like... Why, why do we hate Russia, or why do we hate the Soviet Union so much? And it was always like, well, they're communists. And Damn it. what drove me nuts is I could never get a straight answer on what fucking communism was. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, I, I've always been dubious whenever anyone's all like, you should really hate this. And, you know, they can't explain why. Um, so, yeah, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, when I got older, I found out what communism was, and I'm like, oh no, I can see it. Right. But, you know, it was, I remember it was, it was just so funny, and I think that might have been the mentality of, like, a lot of people at the time, it's like, what's communism? We don't know, it's just bad. We you lost, know? We lost a war over it. Then again, I mean, trying to explain that to a fucking eight-year-old is... <laughs> it's always fucking tricky, so... It was one of the uh, videos I watched, I don't remember the channel. But they would talk about uh, the computers from the uh, USSR and, and around that area and how they would... Uh, backwards compatible, like Sinclairs and stuff like that in order for them to have computers, but... Yeah, and the state the state pretty much controlled it too. That was that that's the one thing I honestly like Oh damn God it. damn it, why the fuck am I sucking so bad? Alright, one more shot. One more shot. I mean I recently learned about bone records and I thought that was quite fascinating. And what those are is uh, the same process they use to make x-rays is also used to uh, process records in the U on the USSR. So what they would do is they take this so-called illegal music from, you know, capitalist countries like the US and the UK and whatnot, 
and they would put these uh, music onto uh, discarded x-ray film. So they're called bone records because they're actual uh, images of bones on the record. Huh. And they just cut it into a circle and you can play it on a record player. Granted, it's not the best of quality. But uh, I, I, I get it because it's, it's, it's still vinyl. It's Right. Again, it's that Soviet ingenuity that makes you go, wow. <laughs> Now we're making progress. Aha! Uh -huh. Aha! Uh -huh. No, no, give me that free guy. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme. I want it. I it's hate those bombs. The one-up is mine. The one-up, the one-up the one is mine. Thank you. My voice is a little shot today. <laughs> Damn it. All right. I can work with that. Now we have to work with this. And we got hamburgers. Aw, oh, hamburgers. I don't know what they're actually called, but I always call them hamburgers because they look like hamburgers. Uh, the funny thing is, is like, if, if when I was a kid uh, and I was asking, what is communism? And all my parents would have had to have said is, that's uh, where the government runs everything. And I would have been like, oh yeah, take them down. <laughs> 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 that, that sounds fucking terrible. And as a fucking kid, I hated being told when to go to bed. <laughs> you know, by my parents, let alone the fucking government, so... The government tells you when to go to bed? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, hey, you know, that's what, what it almost sounded like under fucking communism. Especially to an eight-year-old. Come on, you gotta drop sometime. This guy's a fuck face. Oh, I hate you, Sniper Joe! Oh, wow, look at Ooh, that. Oh, look at this. It's very bricky. Kind of looks like Tetris pieces. This, of course, was like the very first decision I made Ow. when uh, when I was going to like do like pop culture characters in this game. Because it's like, well, Bomb Man's got to be Mr. T. I pity the fool. Because he had the mohawk and all that. Right. Ooh, I got him! Woohoo! You pity Deathful! Respect your mother! <laughs> <laughs> you pity Deathful! Hell yeah! Ah, oh, we did it, folks! We does it! We we beat the 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 six robot masters, and now we got to fight Marilyn Manson. That's actually a really good sprite. <laughs> I'm impressed. I, I don't know. Did he wear a monocle back then? Maybe. I, I don't know. Well, he had the one, like, winded out eye. I was going to say, I think he might have worn a monocle at one point. I don't remember. It was the early 2000s. It was a weird time. On that note, folks, end of the episode. <laughs> end of the episode. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And have a good day, everyone. Uh... Marilyn Manson, you're going down. Yeah.